You know that kind of ruffle that refuses to stay flat? That dramatic, chaotic curl? It's not something that you come across by mistake. It's geometry. And yes, I said the G word and before you start having flashbacks, stick with me here. The first time I broke down hyperbolic crochet, the comment section turned into a math fight. Debates, stitch count wars, full on flat circle confusion. My example was right, but I had made it sound a lot like math class. Instead, it's about unlocking the rule that lets you bend yarn like a sculptor. No pattern necessary. And once you get this concept, you won't just stop following patterns. You'll be able to start visualizing and creating them yourself. So let's talk about that wild ruffle you get when you squeeze too many stitches into too tight of a space. This is a hyperbolic curve and it's kind of a big deal. Let's break it down stitch by stitch. Say we're creating a crochet piece and we start with a chain of two and then every row onward we add one more stitch each row. If you plot that on a graph, rows on the x-axis and stitches on the y-axis, you'll get a nice tidy little straight line, flat, balanced, simple, and the edge of your crochet piece will match. But what if you want something a little bit more interesting? We're gonna need to start with a fixed rate of increase. That means every so many stitches, we're gonna increase by a certain amount and we're gonna hold that for every row. You could add a stitch every other stitch, every third stitch, every 10th stitch, just as long as you keep that pattern going forward every round. Here's the mind bending part. Even though your increase rate is staying fixed, the result when you plot it is actually exponential. And then the more stitches you add per row, the steeper that curve gets. Your crochet project follows along with that curve, rippling, curling, and exploding outward. This is your hyperbolic curve in action. And once you understand this, it lets you visualize how dramatic that silhouette will be before you ever even begin to crochet. And that's how I build fashion, by taking this math and matching it to the drama that I want. Okay, so how can we visualize this in the real world? So let's say we wanted a ruffled sleeve. For ease, we're gonna say we just start with 10 stitches. And say we decide to increase every other stitch. So every second stitch, we're gonna increase by one and hold that as our fixed rate. Seems easy, right? Round three, you're at 34 stitches. Cute little flare, totally manageable, but by round 10, you're at 549 stitches in one row. That's like six feet of crochet. Keep going to round 20, you're staring down 31,618 stitches, more than 230 feet of ruffle. That's entire skein of yarn just to get through half of a ruffle level of chaos because our yarn consumption and the weight of our piece are also both growing exponentially. It's also when that Mean Girls quote, the, the limit, limit does, does not exist, exist, stops being funny and starts sounding like a haunting prediction of when our project is actually gonna end. But now that you get this concept, it allows you to be in charge. Big and dramatic little ripple, you get to decide. So why did such a simple explanation cause such chaos in the comments? Well, crochet geometry is kind of wild, but there are really only three basic shapes that you need to understand, and they can be explained really well as uh, different social media posting energies. Okay, so a flat circle. That's your curated soft launch grid. Clean aesthetic, no drama. You increase your stitches at a chill fixed rate, usually six per round, to keep it balanced and, well, flat. Now a sphere, that's your chaotic vacation photo dump energy. It starts like a flat circle, big, bold, confident, but then you pull it back. You stop increasing, hold steady for a bit, and then maybe even start decreasing. The stitch energy collapses inwards, softens, and closes in on itself. 
and suddenly you're back home in full cozy mode. A perfect contained little orb of calm, still dramatic, but also introverted. And then there's your hyperfixation phase. You just discovered a new show. You're duetting every scene, dropping theories, stitching drama. It's unhinged and you're posting nonstop. That's your hyperbolic curve and it's kind of iconic. You're still increasing at a fixed rate, but it's way too fast of a rate to stay flat. The stitches pile up, the edges ripple, and suddenly you're creating chaos in the most beautiful way. So that's why the comments got spicy. Some of you were focused on the math behind creating a flat circle, which is valid, but forgot that ruffles are in the same family, just dialed way up. A flat circle is calm, a ruffle is the same, just overstimulated and thriving, like your brain at 3 a.m. after seven iced coffees and a TikTok spiral. And for my knitters out there, the concept works exactly the same way. It's just math after all, but you see it much less often because you run out of space on your needles to keep this massive length of ripple much faster than a crocheter will run out of yarn. So what about our flat circle controversy? Does our flat circle have a place in this conversation about hyperbolic crochet? Or do we just need to increase by six every round and forget about it? Well, I could tell you how about I show you? Let's start with the perfect flat circle formula. We start with our round of six and then we need to increase by six every single round. So for the first round, we're just gonna use a single crochet. We're going to do two single crochets in every single stitch. By the second round, we now have 12 stitches and we're gonna increase by six again because that's the formula. To increase 12 by six, that just means every other stitch. So you do a single crochet and then in the next stitch, you're gonna do two single crochets in that same stitch. Round three, we now have 18 single crochets in a circle. Then we're gonna increase again by six, one single crochet in one stitch, another single crochet in another stitch, and then two single crochets in the third stitch then repeat. Wait, wait a second. I feel like we've done this before and we have. So for that first round of six in your flat circle, you're increasing every single stitch, which is how this swatch starts out. Then the second round, you're increasing every other stitch. We've seen that before too. And then by the third round, you're increasing every third stitch. So does this flat circle belong in the same conversation as these hyperbolic pieces? Absolutely. You can see it's just borrowing the rates from each of them and then slowly getting wider and wider. For hyperbolic crochet, this space or frequency at which you do that increase stays fixed to give you that smooth curve that races off to infinity. For a flat circle, the number of increases each round is fixed but the space between those increases or the frequency increases every single round. And what's really cool is when you graph this, your circle will be a different shape, kind of inverted, because what's happening is your frequency is flattening out, racing off towards its own invisible limit. So that's why just saying increase by six every round doesn't help us the same way as understanding the relationship between how your increases impacts the shape of your garment. This allows you to be the architect of the final silhouette, shape, flow, and yarn budget included. You get to decide. No patterns, no need for permission, just sculptural wearable art. If you enjoyed this, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to crochet with me, check out my newsletter below and tell me in the comments, what should I hyperbolically create next? I'm Lee Thayer. Thanks so much for watching. Happy crocheting. I'll see you next time.